the title of this sermon this morning is Replacing Baby Jesus. Boy, there's a, so many different ways and different places I can go with that. But I want to start with questions. Two questions, actually. The first questions we must ask is, who is the baby Jesus? And the second thing is, what does he represent? So let me tackle the first one. Who is the baby Jesus? Luke 2.11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That answers the first one is who is the baby Jesus? He's our Savior. And what does he represent? He represents the love God has for you and me. No greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So we've answered the two questions. Who is the baby Jesus? He's our Savior. What does he represent? God's love. For who? For you. Jesus was born to die for you and for me. This love is the very core of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the very core of Christianity. It is the foundation that our faith is based upon. Scripture says, Thou shalt love me, the Lord thy God, with all of thy heart. Catch it. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength, and all with all of thy mind. And who? Your neighbor as yourself. We've preached on this in the past. But that's who Christ is all about. It's about love. That's what you and I are about, is love. This is the love that motivates God in our behalf. Think about it. The more you love him, the more it motivates him to move in your life. Is that true? It is this love that draws him to us. Think about it. The more you love him, the more he comes to you. This is who and what the baby Jesus represents. Now, here's the question. Can you lose the baby Jesus? Judging by the way some Christians act, I would say, yes, you can. Ouch. And how can you tell if you lost a baby Jesus? It's real easy. This is going to hit home hard on most of us. You lose the love. Because that's who he is. That's what he represents. That's the very basis of Christianity. When you lose love. The love. I'm not talking about lose the like. I'm talking about an agape love. I love you no matter what you do to me. I love you. It is a choice. It is a decision I have made. And there's nothing you can do to change that. That is what lied in that manger. Pure love. He loves you. And when you lose that love, you've lost the baby Jesus. What happens when we lose the love? We have a tendency to replace it with something else. I like that video. Isn't that true? This love should never be replaced by with something else. For example, the love of money. God says you can't love God and love money. You will either like one and and, and despise the other or, or like the other and despise one. You can't serve both. Because if you lose the love of God, you're going to replace it with something else. Many have replaced the love for Jesus with the love of money. Some of you are not going to like what I'm fixing to say, but I'm telling you the truth. I hate to say this, but Chick-fil-A is a prime example. The owner made a stand for the love of Christ. Remember that? He made a stand. Now his son makes his stand for the love of money. 
And the only other thing I'm going to say about that is you can go to my Facebook right now and see a place where you can write a letter to this and encourage him. Go back to what your father believed. Amen. Judas Iscariot replaced the love for Jesus for the love of money. Was it 30 pieces of silver? Now these people lost sight of the baby Jesus and replaced him with something else. Do we lose baby Jesus and replace him with Santa Claus? You knew that one was coming. That's probably the first thing that came in your mind when you saw the video, right? I wanted to deliberately show you there's other things do we lose the love for be, for baby jesus and replace it with love for family popularity pleasure work political ideas or for pride why is it when i preach like this you guys get so quiet am i preaching the truth now, i'm not condemning us I'm just saying there's areas in our life we need to improve so we can get closer to him. So we can make a bigger difference in the people that we love that are around us. Because the more you love God, the more that it motivates him to do things for us. That's the truth. The more it draws him to us. You should not replace the love with things you idolize. Remember the first commandment? You have lost Jesus. If you've replaced love with something else, would you agree? Never replace love with something else. Never replace love with anger. Something had happened the other day. I came in here and I was praying and I was praying and something that something had happened. I had anger was going up inside of me and the Lord says, you remember what you're preaching this Sunday on? Well, I tell you, as a child of God, he knows how to spank us kids every now and then, doesn't he? I was replacing his love with anger. Never replace love with self-righteousness. Have you ever done that? Now, well, this is the reason why I feel this way, because of what he did according to your word. According to your word, Lord. And the Lord says, where's your love? Whew. Have you lost baby Jesus? Is my mic still working? Okay. Never replace love with lust. What are you doing on the Internet now? What are you watching for on television? What do you watch when you walk down the street? I hope I'm only talking to guys, but I guess it's possible you girls could be doing this. Never replace love with depression. Have you lost Jesus Christ? Have you lost the sight where he says, give all your anxiety, give your cares to me. Why? Because he cares for us. Have you lost the love that God has placed in your life and changed it out for depression? Have you replaced love with justification? Have you replaced love with resentment? Boy, it's quiet in this place. You can't replace that love with the love of your family. Wait a minute, Pastor. Replace the love of Jesus Christ for the love of my family? You mean I've lost Jesus Christ if I love my family? Let me quote Jesus Christ. He that loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. If you're doing that, you've lost them. And you're replacing the baby Jesus With family. How many of us have been guilty of that? Now, the love we have appears to be limited. I would agree with that statement. We can only love so much on our own. But the love that God gave us is unlimited through Jesus Christ. Get that in our hearts. I can love God and my family Through his love, more than I can 
through my own love. Put that one in there. I want the love that lied in that major to be in my heart because that's a greater love that I can show to my family more than what I'm capable of doing. And I love my family, don't you? And I want to love them with all the love that's in my heart. That's why Christ has got to be in my heart. That's why I cannot afford to lose the baby Jesus, even for their sake. Because with him inside of me, I can make a far greater difference. I cannot love my family like God loves my family. Let that one sink in. Is that the truth? Boy, I'm preaching better than you guys are responding. I appreciate that. That's better than snoring. And with these lights, I can't tell. Oh, there you are. So if I cannot love my family like God loves my family, I choose to love my family through his love. The baby Jesus represents Christ's great perfect love. Perfect love. Everything he gives us is perfect and complete. Would you agree with that? He, his love, it meets all of our needs. It meets all of our desires. It meets everything. In him, we can be all things. Through him, nothing's impossible. All things are possible. Through him, you have the power to do and to overcome everything that you might want to trade out for. His love is our strength and our shelter in times of need and trouble. Listen to what I just said. His love is our strength, is it not? His love is our shelter in times of need and times of trouble. How many know that to be true through your own experience? Every hand in this place, as far as I can tell. During this Christmas season, we are to recognize the love that lied in that manger. Let us not lose or replace that love come this January or February or any month, this whole year. Don't lose sight. Keep it alive, guys, forever. How do we keep from losing the, baby, uh, losing the baby Jesus? One way not to lose the baby Jesus is to increase your love for him. On purpose. How can your love for the baby Jesus in the manger increase? By using the love he's given you to make a difference in the lives of those that's around you. Use it. Let it be your motivating power. Do you want to give gifts? Give gifts that motivate love for the love of Jesus Christ. Give gifts that encourage them to love God more. You mean I can't give them a toy airplane if they want it? Yeah. You can. But I also believe that we need to make sure that they understand that these gifts are just symbolic of the greatest gift that was ever given to us. And that was the baby Jesus lying in a manger. We give gifts because we love one another, right? If you're giving it out of obligation, that kind of, well, let's don't go there. The more of his love you use, the more love he gives you to use. And I think it's important to put that at the end of it. How do you know that God loves you? His love is greatly expressed in his dedication to your welfare. When you trust him, has he ever failed you? Never. When you listen to his wisdom and you follow it, has it ever led you astray? Well, I thought at first, but the more I followed him, the more I saw, huh, the devil's just lying to me again. You know, he's really good at that. 
Although he wants to give us the desires of our heart, I want you to understand, as a father, I wanted to give my kids the desires of, his, of, of their heart. So does God want to give us the desires of our heart. But true love, sometimes those desires lead to destruction and to misery. Isn't that true? There were a lot of things that my kids wanted. One was when they turned 16, the meanest, fastest car that you could ever imagine. Not to my kid. He's too much like me. I didn't want him to die within a week. Do you understand? It's called tough love. And it is a term that every good parent knows and understands. God is a perfect parent. I trust him. God, I would love to have this. God says, not yet. Right? My kids, Dad, give me this. I don't think so. Right? Good parents in here, right? How many of good parents have said that? Oh, this is disappointing. <laughs> oh, I got some good hands up. Good. That's not loving them. That's patronizing them, patronizing them. That's just kind of spoiling them. Right? I could go into stories on that as a youth pastor, but I'm not. God is the greatest parent of them all. He's my parent. Is he yours? Amen. Does he love you? Amen. Oh, my word, no greater love that he should die for me. Right. What more could he give? He gave it all. His love is more than we could ever comprehend he cares for us that's what the baby Jesus represents all God wants from us is to love and trust him with all of our heart with all of our minds and with all of our beings and because of Jesus Christ we can do that your choice I choose him how about you why should we ever lose or replace that love in our hearts and lives? Only a fool, only a fool would do that. How many are fools? I don't think so. I'm glad you didn't raise your hand. That means you're listening. That's a test that you can do as a minister. Just raise your hand, and those are just half asleep. They're going, oh, was that wrong? Did anybody see? <laughs> George didn't raise his hand. If he did, I didn't see it. Thank God for the lights, right, George? I can't. <laughs> Jesus is not only the reason for the season. He is the reason for our lives. And when you see that manger scene, you see that baby, remember, not only the reason for the season, but the reason for our lives. You must be careful never to lose or replace Jesus in your life. Do I get an amen on that? Amen. Now, Jesus is the centerpiece of this season and is the centerpiece that we should never lose or replace in our lives. His love is not only for now, it is forever. Amen. The life he's given us is not just for now. It is forever. Amen. Now are we the sons of God. Now is redemption in our hearts and in our lives. Now, not after we die, now is eternal life. What is eternal life? It's eternal life with him. Amen. In comparison to our, uh, eternal damnation, same word, which means without him. That means eternal life. If you got Christ in your heart and you understand what was in that manger and you've not replaced it, that means you have eternal life right now because you have that relationship with God. Let's, let's fix this, this picture. Do you know that baby that's lying in the manger 2,000 years ago? Do you know that baby? Do you know him? Do you believe in the baby that lied in that manger 2,000 years ago? Have you lost the baby Jesus? 
I'm going to give you a suggestion. Instead of replacing the G- baby Jesus, find him again. Tear the house up until you find him again. Yes. He's there somewhere. To those that believe, he gave power to become the sons of God. He has the power to forgive you of all of your sins. Is that true? And not only do that, but to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Have you heard that wise men still seek him? We see that everywhere, have for the last few years. Here's what I'm asking you now. Be a wise man, a wise woman. Look for him. Find him. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. Listen to the promise. If you lost him, seek him. Find him. You will find him. I can't do it on my own. That's what we've been talking about this morning. God is your strength. He will show you the baby Jesus. He will help you find him again. That that love may be in your heart, not only during this Christmas season, but for the rest of all eternity. Let it grow. What is the purpose of Christmas? The relationship God had with Adam before the fall is the relationship that God wants to have with you right now. That's the purpose of Christmas. That's why he came to die for you. That you may have a relationship with God Almighty. The God that that holds all the dust in the universe in the palm of his hand. The God that named every star that you see at night. Billions and billions of them. The God who died on the cross, who sent his son to show his love for you. That's why we have Christmas. The baby Jesus makes that relationship possible. Don't lose it. Find it. Seek it. Let it become a part of your life. Starting today, starting this Christmas season, let it grow. Let it grow. They shall know us by his love. Isn't that what the old song used to say? Do people know that you're a Christian by the love that's in your heart? Even tough love? It is his love, even now, that is drawing you to him, is it not? Think about it. Do not ignore that love. Do not replace it with something else. It is a gift from God to you this Christmas. I want the praise team to come up. I've been a Christian for a long time, Pastor. Me too. Since 1969. I remember when that wasn't a long time. How many years is that? You've mapped people. 50. 50 years? You would think I would know more than what I know now, right? But the more I get and I find his love, the more I need it, the more he draws me. You know, these sermons is a drawing to me. He draws me to him. Why? Because I love him. And I want to have more love for you and for everybody else. Again, that's what it says. No greater love. But if I I have to follow two commandments and they deal with one subject, love. Love God with all your heart and your mind and your soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. Do you love you? Do you love your neighbor? And do you love him? Accept this gift. Accept Christ into your life. Accept his love in your life. It is a gift from God to you this Christmas day. God's gift to you this Christmas is a new beginning. Think about it. You want to start all over? 
You can start all over this morning. A chance to change into the perfect person that God intended for you to be. Not who you are, but who God intended. He created you in the womb. He had plans for you before he threw the stars throughout the universe. He knew you and has a plan and intended for you to be a certain way. If you're not that way, that's the good news. Because of that little baby that's in that manger, your life can be changed. A chance to start all over, to be renewed. This is why we celebrate Christmas. Christmas, this is why we must never lose or replace the baby in that manger. God right now is offering this great gift of love. All you have to do is accept it. Never lose it. Never replace it. Lord, I thank you for your word that you've given us this morning. I hope that it opens our heart and our mind to the true meaning of Christmas, of what that baby lying in that manger meant. And to us this morning this day as Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And he shall save and, and change and make a difference in our lives. And restore a relationship that God so much wants to give you. Heads bowed and eyes closed. With God's spirit drawing you. Don't ignore that. Don't question. Just follow it. God's saying, I want a closer relationship with you right now. Whether it's getting your heart right with him or just retuning it. God's dealing with you right now. Can I see your hand? Anybody in this place? They're coming up. Come on, church. If you want God to be number one in your life, quit changing out for self-righteousness. Quit changing out for justification. Will people look in your life? Do they see the love of the baby Jesus in your life? We need to look at reality. Is there power in your life? Do you want more power in your life? Pastor, you shouldn't be standing here condemning. I'm not condemning. I'm just telling the truth. I want your eyes to be open to what's going on. You want to make a difference this Christmas? Then let's keep getting closer to Him. These altars are filling up. Let me change directions. I feel the Lord leading me this way too. How many want a greater love in your life than what you already have? That should be everybody that's in here. It's 11 35. We normally get out of here after 12. Can we spend the next few minutes, maybe 10 minutes, maybe whatever God puts in your heart to renew our relationship with God and say, God, I want more of your Savior in my life. Can we come to these altars and as we praise Him and worship Him this morning, let's realize what Christmas is all about. And let's renew that spirit within us. To those who will, come on down. To the rest, if you can, let's stand and let's praise the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, that little baby lying in a manger.